we've talked about our definitions of gender and how our gender identity develops. Now we're going to talk about some developmental differences in terms of gender. And so it's important to understand that these differences are only talking about averages. And so when we talk about that boys are different than girls, we're not saying all boys are different from all girls. We're saying the average boy is different than the average girl. And so when we look at averages, it's important to understand we're looking at the range of scores in boys and the range of scores in girls as distributions. And so even if the average score for boys is different than the average score for girls, there's overlap. This dark purple zone is when the boys and girls are scoring higher than each other. And there definitely could be some girls that score higher than the average boy and some boys that score lower than the average girl, even when we say some boys score higher than girls on average. These are only looking at population trends only and doesn't explain individual differences. So only looking at population trends, we do find there are some gender differences in terms of physical, intellectual, and personality traits. And so we're going to go through these three categories quite briefly. And so when we talk about physical differences, these can be related not just to one's gender identity and expression, but they might also overlap with our sex at birth. And so our sex assigned at birth may also influence things like our hormones and our genetic differences, which could help to explain some of these. For instance, we know that on average, boys and men tend to be taller and hairier than girls and women. That has to do with testosterone. Testosterone tends to make us taller, it tends to make us hairier. Boys also tend to have more muscles, which is also related to testosterone. In comparison, if we look over here, girls tend to be born healthier and stay healthier up until about age six than boys. And that's because of our embryonic development. Girls don't have to grow a penis, and by default, all embryos start off as female, so they get to be born with slightly more mature respiratory, digestive, neurological, circulatory systems, so they tend to be born a bit healthier. We also know that as compared to boys, girls tend to have more body fat, and that's because of the role of the hormone estrogen. It's important for our girls and women to put on lots of body fat in their hips, for instance. Now, this may be somewhat biologically driven, but somewhat socialized, and we find that girls tend to have more early to develop and superior fine motor skills on average, versus boys tend to have more early to develop and superior gross motor skills on average. By gross motor skills, we find that boys tend to be stronger, they tend to be faster, and they tend to have faster reaction time than girls. That could be socialized, they could be rewarded for engaging in sports and doing things that are more active, but it could also be biologically based, as you know boys tend to have higher activity levels, which is also related to some of their hormones and androgens. Girls, as compared to boys, tend to be good at the fine motor things, like using needles and threads, or writing, or typing, or keyboards. Interestingly enough, we talk about how gender stereotypes tend to change across cultures and within generations, and we know that most computer engineers originally were women, and most people using computers were women because of the fine motor skills and the dexterity around the keyboard, and now computer scientists are largely men, so that has really flipped and changed. And we know that girls tend to lose their sight earlier and boys tend to lose their hearing earlier. We talked about this way back in physical development, but it may have something to do with the fact that men tend to work in louder industries uh, with lots of machines and factories and girls may be uh, using lots of more reading and, and watching the kids and may use and strain their sight a bit more often. And so those are some of the physical differences. In terms of intellectual differences, these are sometimes very controversial and remain controversial, but we know that girls compared to boys tend to develop their language skills a bit earlier on. In linguistic development, we didn't really go into some of the gender differences, but on average, girls tend to speak more than boys and their production explosion tends to happen earlier than boys. They also more likely to learn to read faster than boys. So this may have to do with the fact that we start talking to baby girls more than we talk to baby boys, and they may be socialized that way or may have something to do with their neuroanatomy and the way their brain develops and with the role of estrogen and how the brain develops in its linguistic spheres. We also know that girls tend to have more perceptual sensitivity. What does that mean? Well, that means if there's a faucet dripping in the other room, girls are more likely to hear it than boys and get irritated at it than boys. Girls are more sensitive to lots of stimuli that are very, very, very subtle, like a slight smell or a slight tap or a slight shake, and they're more likely to pick up on those little things. And girls are more likely to have good spatial memory. This is the idea that if you get them to memorize the location of a bunch of random objects and then you hide those objects, they can remember where everything was. And they tend to do that more, and then they tend to do that better than boys. So that's one type of spatial skill that girls tend to have superior uh, tackling of.
In comparison, boys have some other spatial skills they tend to perform better at. One of them is spatial rotation. This is like if you're going to rotate a Lego block or rotate a pipe or rotate a puzzle piece. It's the idea they can visualize how that rotates and connects in their mind. This is good for things like doing a Rubik's Cube, for example. Boys also tend to overperform girls on average when it comes to map reading skills. There is a gender stereotype that men never ask for directions, but actually what happens is when they look at a map, boys and men are just a little bit faster at orientating themselves and finding where they are on a map. Again, I can't emphasize this enough, these are averages. And we know that some women that are more androgynous are better, than, better at what we're saying is on the boys' side. And we know that some men that are more feminine are actually better at what we're saying is on the girls' side. So there is lots of individual differences in these things. Now, one area that's particularly controversial is math. Originally, we thought that boys were better at math, and then there was some evidence saying girls are better at math, and then there was some evidence saying boys were better at some types of math, and girls are better at some other types. Like maybe girls are better at pure calculations and their operations, and boys are better at problem solving skills, or boys are better at geometry, and girls are better at algebra. And there's been lots of studies trying to pick apart who's better at math when. The latest research has really shown that maybe boys have a slight edge, but it's so slight, it's almost negligible. And so for the purposes of this class, we're gonna say, yeah, historically, there's been a stereotype that boys are better at math. There's a little bit of evidence that boys are better at math, but it's really quite minor. Next up is we have the personality differences. And so personality differences could again be socialized or they could be related to our biology. And so we find that girls tend to be more cooperative, more passive, and this has to do with their level of agreeableness and level of oxytocin in their blood. Oxytocin makes us want to smooth things out and get along with others. So it could have a biological basis. It could also have a socialized basis where we train girls early on to play with dolls and take care of others and be nice to others and all those stereotypes. In comparison, boys tend to be more competitive and assertive. And again, this might be related to dominance and testosterone on a biological level, but it can also be what they've been socialized to and be reinforced for being assertive and brave and taking charge. We know that in terms of personality factors, girls tend to score a little bit higher in conscientiousness, especially in terms of keeping things orderly and being affiliated with details, versus boys tend to be slightly more active. And so we do find that could be a subscore of extroversion and surgency, if you think about temperament. And so they tend to uh, be a bit more active. That could be testosterone based. In terms of conscientiousness, I'm not aware of any hormone basis for that, but it might have to do with perceptual sensitivity and how girls may have a higher desire for orderliness because of that perceptual sensitivity and attention to details because of that uh, perceptual sensitivity. Now, in terms of our frustrations, when we get frustration, uh, girls are more likely to be anxious, to internalize, and unfortunately to self-harm. When they are frustrated, boys could definitely internalize, but as compared to boys, girls tend to be more likely to internalize, to become anxious, and to hurt themselves. When boys are frustrated, some of them will, of course, internalize, but as compared to girls, boys are more likely to be aggressive and externalize and hurt others. And so we have to accept that there is a major role society plays in this. There's something that we're doing where we're telling girls it's okay to hurt themselves. And there's something that society is doing where we're telling boys it's okay to hurt others. That's a major problem. And, uh, and, and so it's really interesting how one is more internalizing and one is more externalizing more often than the other. Now, when boys and girls experience major mental health crises, such as major depressive disorder, we know that depression tends to appear in a very gendered way. We know lots of the clinical diagnoses tend to appear in a gendered way. Boys and girls with ADHD look very different, and boys and girls on the autism spectrum disorder tend to look very different. But when we talk about depression, it's important to understand that when girls and women experience depression, they're more likely to cry often and to seek help. Versus boys are not likely to seek help. They're more likely to withdraw and avoid and have unexplained absenteeism where they just won't show up to work and they just won't show up to school and they won't call people back. And girls are more likely to express that they're experiencing a lot of emotional pain when they're upset versus boys are more likely to say they don't really feel emotional pain, but they have a lot of back aches. Men with depression feel a lot of body aches for some reason. And of course, this is one's really sad and somber, but we know when it comes to suicide, more women and girls attempt suicide, but more boys and men die by suicide. And so suicide is something that is very serious for people of either gender, but it's important to understand that the way people go about suicide tends to happen in a very gendered way, 
where boys tend to pick things and pick means that are most likely going to result in their death versus girls and women tend to pick means and strategies that are less likely to result in their death, even though they're going to attempt it more often. And so these personality differences can't be underestimated. These are real measurable differences we find in clinical psych and in personality psych. So there's definitely differences between boys and girls and women and men. And so in terms of gender, one of the things I really want to emphasize here is sometimes a gender difference only happens because we believe a stereotype. And because we believe a stereotype, we socialize each other to follow the stereotype. And because we socialize each other to follow the stereotype, we reinforce the stereotype, which makes us continue to socialize each other. Some gender differences are based on biology, and they'll always be different no matter what. But some gender differences are only culturally different because we believe the stereotypes. 